Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ben Trevin! My name is Benjamin. Benjamin is a, uh, is a biblical name translated directly from Hebrew from the Bible. It means child of God, son of my right hand. It's a Christian way of saying your dad's a wanker. So there you go. I love the city. I love it because it's a cultural city. Don't you guys like it because it's a cultural city? That's pretty cool, isn't it? It's cool because I can't, in London I'm just as a skinhead and I come up here and I'm a Buddhist. So... <laughs> Or a cancer patient, which is, you know... No, 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 I'm, I'm fine with that. The pity sex is awesome. It's amazing. <laughs> this accent's from New Zealand. Uh, some people might say Australia. Fair enough, fair enough. Not a big difference, but there is a big difference between the two countries. I can clear it up for you. Australia beat us in the swimming. Oh. And Australia beat us in the cycling. Uh-oh. We beat Australia in the treatment of indigenous people. <laughs> Yeah, it's all about your priorities, really, isn't it? They've got the Institute of Sport, we've got a history we can remember, so... Nice to be given that. Yo, guys, this is Dead Pat. We're here with Ben Crellin. Ben, you just did Spank. How was it? Oh, awesome, yeah. It's always awesome. Spank's, Spank's a great show, man. Did I say Spunk? I think I almost said Spunk. Spunk is also a great spunk show. Spunk is also a great show. Not the same show, but yeah, no, Spank's amazing. Did yeah. you pay about the same price for it, weirdly enough? Uh, I don't know. I haven't paid for it for a while, but I'm glad you can bring me up to date <laughs> with the prices, really. That's the price now, the same as... Look, it's just nice to be out of London. That city's getting too intense, man. I just had this woman come up to me on a tube before I left with a little baby in her arms. A baby in her arms, like a genuine infant. Right, going, going, money, money, four to my baby, money, four to my baby. And I, I was, you know, I was the only one in the tube, so, you know, pressure. Uh, money for to my baby, and I pulled out a tenner, and she was, she, she was like, M money for to my baby, and I was like, uh, 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 baby first, baby first, and then you, you go, oh, baby first. Some of, some of your set is sometimes controversial, but also quite exciting. Um, where do you get your inspiration for it? Uh, it's it's so cliched now, but it, it's Hicks uh, is is definitely my inspiration. Uh, he pretty much changed comedy for me when I when I saw him. I saw him when I was very young as a comic. And we've got no guy. We've got no gauge on atrocity anymore, man. It's gone. It's gone. Whatever ethics we once had are gone. Whatever morals we once had are gone. You want me to show you, right? I'll prove it to you. Whatever ethics we once had are gone. Whatever morals we once had are gone. You want me to show you, right? I'll prove it to you. A friend of mine recently bought her boyfriend the box set series Dexter, okay? I'm not familiar Woo! with that show. Right, right, there's some fans, right? It's a very popular show. It's up to like series five or something. And I was like, well, what's it about? She was like, ethereal killer. <laughs> I was like, wait, what, you mean people that catch a serial killer? Like a CSI kind of, mm, mm. <laughs> What, you mean the lead? <laughs> what, the central protagonist? What the, what, the hero is a serial killer? Mm, mm. But isn't, isn't that appalling? Oh, but he's really good looking. <laughs> and he only kills the bad people. He only kills the people that deserve it. Well, great. That's where we are ethically and morally regarding our entertainment. Time for a series about a paedophile. <laughs> it's okay, he only rapes the bad kids, you know. <laughs> Only sodomizes the kids that deserve it! <laughs> Only gets his victims from the naughty step. <laughs> and he's really good looking. <laughs> the kids are pretty hot too, so it's a win-win scenario. Before gigs, do you have any kind of pre-gig ritual or kind of thing that get, gets you going? Uh, yeah, I do some reflexology on myself, which sounds, you know, I wish I had very something, something very cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I did like yeah. shoot up in a room. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I rub my hands and feet, James. Um, it makes me feel all the better. No, it's something I learned in, in Canada. I was, I was touring Canada. I taught myself reflexology. Oh, right. And I noticed, I noticed it really kind of chills me out a bit. So yeah, I guess it is very zen. It, just rela it relaxes me. Sometimes I feel quite tense. Can you? Uh, can you? Can yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, ooh. so oh, spunk is up. Spunk is really <laughs> up. Spunk is so up. This is not a hairstyle, by the way. This is just a stern warning to all the other follicles on my body that deserters will not be tolerated. <laughs> my eyebrows right now are going, grow, grow! Look what he did 
to the others. It's tough having this hairstyle because no one's going to come up and tell you when you miss a spot. No one's missed a spot back here. No one's going to walk up to someone who, for all respects, could be an actual skinhead, right? And go, oh, I think you missed a spot. That's, that's like going up to a Klu Ku Klux Klan member going, oh, I think your pillowcase is inside out. Because <laughs> yeah, I can see the seam. Look. And the label, look at that, do not dry clean. <laughs> oh, and it's 100% cotton. <laughs> How ironic. Spank is quite a rowdy night, you get kind of crazy heck, because what is the... It's mad, it's a mad night, it's one of the best, I think it's the true late in life, right? I think late in life, I think, and you heard it first here, and I will probably never get that gig as a result, <laughs> but <laughs> you heard it first here, Spank is the true late in life, okay? If you really want late in life, go to Spank. Um, I really, yeah, no, I, f I firmly believe that. From midnight through to three, I, I think it's one of the coolest shows on the fringe. Isn't irony one of the best sources of comedy that there is? Have you noticed that? You ever seen pro-lifers throwing eggs at an abortion clinic? Have you ever seen that? <laughs> we live in that world. That's the world we fucking live in, right? What do we call it? The first world. That's what it's called, the first world, right? And then there's something that's the third world. Oh, the third world. And you know you're living in the first world if you're watching the six o'clock news. And you know you're living in the third world if you're on the six o'clock news. <laughs> Look at that, they're starving in HD. That's awesome. I can see everything. I can see the kid and the family behind them. Look at that. Clarity's amazing. In fact, when I've got the glasses on, I even try and swat the flies sometimes. That's, that's how much I pay for that television. It's really, it's like you're there. It's like you're right there. But you know, with food. What, what has been the most kind of interesting or imaginative heckle that's been thrown your way? Wow, um, okay, probably just noises. The, the most common one is probably, you, you announce you're from New Zealand and you're often at people going meh, which is an allusion to the you have sex with sheep uh. type scenario. Um, that's a very common one. It's not the most, it's not the weirdest one I've had. The weirdest one I've had is, is I've had objects thrown at me, which, which has been a bit strange. The weirdest object I had thrown at me was a rubber duck. They Just, ducked uh, you? They ducked me. They ducked me. Mother they officially ducked me. I think it was in Leicester or something. They, they, it was a, yeah, rubber They're duck. They're crazy though. So, I mean, uh, they, they rubber duck anything. So they, they duck. I got, I got ducked. You can get religious applications now, right? You can get like the, uh, you, you, can get a, you can get a Mecca application. It tells you where Mecca is at any given point. Uses your GPS, right? You can get an atheist application, tells you where Richard Dawkins is at any point, right? <laughs> you get a Christian application, goes through all the music on your phone, deletes anything that's good. <laughs> Some people are deeply religious, not me, I'm very shallow. I'm shallowly religious, that's why I'm into Buddhism, only for the hairstyle and the kung fu films. I'm into Christianity, but only for the presents and the chocolate. People say, Jesus died for your sins. I'm like, nope, he died for my holidays. <laughs> 2,000 years with a long weekend to confectionery. Praise the Lord, he rocks. He's awesome. First day of Easter is called Good Friday. That's not Good Friday. You get that day off work. That's fucking awesome Friday, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, if that's what we get for killing religious icons, we should really kill a few more. Don't you think? <laughs> that's one bumper sticker I've never seen. Jesus, he rose from the dead so that you can stay in bed. You know, whenever you do religious material, there'll always be some people in the room that go, we must mock the religious. Oh my God, why are we mocking the <laughs> We can't offend the religious. <laughs> that would be awful. We offended the religious. <laughs> do the religious care about offending the non-religious? Are there priests having meetings in churches right now going, hey, 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 that whole bit we do about the guy who walks on water and comes back from the dead, we should really pull back on that. <laughs> There's some rational, logical people out there that's really going to upset them. They're going to get really offended by that shit. Am I really supposed to be worried that there's a Catholic priest out there right now with his cock halfway into a 12-year-old going, the comedian said what? He said what? 
Really? That's what he said? Really? Even though only a portion of the crowd got the joke, he was doing that every night? Really? Even though only some people got their satire, he kept doing it? That's appalling. And the public knew about it, and it was published, and he did it in different cities, including Edinburgh, in public, and we knew about it, and no one reported it? That's appalling. We should tell the BBC. The public needs to know. We need to bring this to an end. The public needs to know. Shh. Show me the tears. Show me the tears. Show me the tears. Jesus only loves you if you cry. Jesus only loves you if you cry. And I'm the bad guy. You guys have been amazing. Thanks a lot. I'll see you later, guys. So, Ben, uh, where can our viewers follow you? Is, have you got a website, a YouTube channel, or uh, Twitter? Yeah, you can channel? check me out at uh, bencrellin.com is my website. Uh, and there should be some functional Twitter links and Facebook links there. Um, yeah. All right, cool. Well, uh, Ben Crellin's been dead power. Bring it in, man. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. This is nice. Tonight and sat at the front completely on their own was a small, short, overweight goth person. And I, like every other person in this room, would naturally presume that that small, short, overweight goth person's sexual partner is a tall, thin goth person. Because <laughs> that's what every fucking goth couple looks like. Every single goth couple in the world looks like a satanic number 10. <laughs> And being a midget at a sex club is like being a prized pig at a country fair. <laughs> Very popular. <laughs> and I'm no prude, obviously. <laughs> you gotta do like the locals. <laughs> I ended up having sex with an eye doctor. I didn't know he was an eye doctor. Just in the middle of sex, he was like, one finger or two, better or worse? <laughs> You can check out that video here. Yeah. No, no, I, our camera doesn't. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I mean, how drunk are you?